Hey monkeys, welcome back to Guitar Quackery, where we use scientifically proven methods to fix, build, and study guitars. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, save some money on cheap guitar strings and your frets will pay the price. You know, there's really no need to uh, speculate what cheap guitar strings might or might not do to our frets. We can just read what's written on the package. Prolonged use of cheapo guitar strings will require frequent fret repairs. How about that? You know, I want to have a, a closer look at these strings. Now, check these out. Uh, first of all, you can tell that these are cheap strings. Uh, I mean, it says right here, but you know, the packaging is really cheap. Let's uh, look what it says on, on the back. When it comes to cheap, our cheapo guitar strings are the cheapest of the cheap. Good to know, right? If you want to save money on strings. To further cut down on the cost of changing strings, Cheapo strings can be kept on your guitar for as long as it takes until they break. Prolonged use of cheapo guitar strings will require frequent, oh, that's the same thing, right? Frequent fret repairs. They really mean it. The corrosion that will build up on these strings over prolonged use will be abrasive to your frets. If systematic fret wear isn't desired, please consider using Daddario XS coated strings. Now, I happen to have a pack of those here. And uh, you can already tell the difference by, you know, the packaging. And there you have it, cheapo guitar strings. Okay. <clears throat> You might recall, sorry, Guitar Quackery, no, we don't sell these. But, <laughs> I don't know, try eBay. No, I'm not recommending them. You know, just watch the rest of the video, okay? Uh, oh, and subscribe. And, and you too, please. And like. As I was trying to say, as you might recall, in a recent video, I showed you under a microscope how a string starts to wear down the surface of a fret microscopically in real time. In that video, I only showed you the type of fret wear that is caused by bending a string against a fret, which we typically do during a guitar solo. But there is also a different kind of fret wear. The fret wear that typically happens on the first three or four frets, which is caused by playing chords in first position. In that previous video, I said that I had no way of showing that kind of fret wear in real time under a microscope. I was wrong. As it turns out, I recently came across a guitar that turned out to be the perfect candidate for that kind of presentation. The guitar had not been played in years, so the strings were corroded and the frets had developed a layer of patina, which is surface oxidation. I realized that a guitar in that condition was going to work really well for this demo because of two reasons. One, the corroded strings would be very abrasive to the frets. And two, the wear of the frets would show as the abrasive string would start removing the thin film of oxides from the surface of the fret and exposing the shiny metal underneath. It is quite fascinating, so I really hope you watch this video till the end as there are two parts, both fascinating. First, I'll show you uh, a recording of the experiment under the microscope 
before any work had been done to the frets. What you're about to see is probably very similar to what happens to the frets when cheap uncoated strings are left on the guitar for too long. Those strings will corrode and the conditions will be very similar to what we are going to see in this video. I don't think I need to uh, convince you that this guitar has been neglected for a while. Uh, the strings are corroded and we can see the frets are uh, covered with a layer of oxides which make them look very dull. Um, I will play the second string on the second fret a bunch of times to see what happens. We can already see some fret wear. I'm sure you've noticed tiny pieces of debris, metal debris, flying off in all directions. Um, as you can see, this string is really damaging this fret. Now, I'm not too worried because um, I'm going to do a full level crown and polish on this guitar and will restore the frets to uh, their best condition. Uh, but here it is. Uh, this is a fret wear caused by plucking the string. In this close-up, you could really see debris flying off in all directions and accumulating around that crater. Um, also, you can see that the uh, fret wear is happening on the left side um, and not over the entire footprint of the existing fret wear. I believe uh, the neck basically developed an up bow uh, which raised the action and now the string is under a slightly different angle, which is why we see this. Let's play it again. So I think I, by now I proved my point. Um, the frets wear every time you plug the strain. The microscopic wear and tear of the fret was undeniable. Uh, but now comes the interesting part. I performed a full level crown and polish on this guitar and after all the polishing and buffing, we now have a guitar with untouched let's call them virgin frets. With the frets buffed to a mirror shine, we now once again have a perfect candidate for the same experiment, but this time using high quality Daddario excess coated strings, which I already put on the guitar. One of the objectives of doing a level crown and polish is to remove all the fret wear that we've seen in the uh, recording. Uh, we do that by sending down all the frets to the lowest point on the fretboard, which is the part of the fret that has the most wear. Now, we can look at the same fret under the microscope again and, and hope to observe some fret wear as we pluck the fretted string. I know it's hard to believe that this is the same guitar, uh, but uh, it is. You can compare the wood grain from the previous shot, you'll see it's the same. Um, I will play the same string, uh, which is the second string on the second fret once again. Okay, so just a few times and you can already see a little bit of a, a tiny uh, fret wear. Uh, let me just zoom in. Let me just reposition a little bit, okay, and zoom in a little bit more, right there, okay, so there it is, right, so let's play it again, okay, so we see a tiny bit of fret wear uh, caused by this string, uh, now, I'm sure that if, if, 
if I were using those cheapo strings, corroded cheapo strings, we'd be seeing a little more fret wear than what we see here. Um, let me let me zoom in all the way so that we can observe um, this fret wear under high power magnification. All right, so there it is. Now let's uh, play again. So it seems like the string is smudging uh, the material all over the fret. Uh, I, I'd like to uh, point out that this is a, a brand new string, right? And um, uh, it's still um, damaging the fret. So now let's look at a uh, wound string. Uh, here we have our D string. And you can see this string is uh, coated. Uh, it is uh, a D'Addario XS string. It has a coating wrapped around. If I focus, you can see it. All right, the fret is clean. Now we are going to play just, just a few times. Okay. <laughs> Here we see some scratches caused by the windings of the string. We should move to, hold on, our A string. Okay, you can see the coating on the string as well. Even better because the string is bigger. Okay, we want to look at the fret. It's clean. Now let's play. Okay, just three times and um, I, I should uh, zoom in and readjust the light, hold on. If I readjust the light, you get more contrast and you can see a scratch. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, we want to see our low E string. Uh, now on, on this one you can really see the coating wrapped around and let's look at the fret and now let's play a little bit three times and that's it we can see how the string is damaging the fret all right so that's uh, a brand new fret with some fresh fret damage. Now that you've seen it all under the microscope, we've come to the most interesting part of this video. That's the part where we can discuss how you can also participate in all this scientific research. That's very easy to do. Uh, you can just click some links, like, share, subscribe, and also click the bell icon so that you can get notified when I upload a new video. Now, if you think that I've done enough work to earn a coffee, please consider clicking the link to buy me a coffee. And right there, there's also a link to support me on Patreon for as little as $1 per month. Lastly, you can also use the comments section to request topics for future videos and to let me know what you think I could be doing better for your viewing pleasure. I hope to see you soon.